So if you're a composer and you've written for the harp, you probably have had a harpist say, this music doesn't really fit the hands. What exactly does that mean? Today I'm going to talk about my number one tip for writing idiomatically for the harp, and this has to do with groupings of notes, or what harpists refer to as placing. Hi, I'm Danielle from Compose Harp, and I want to help you learn how to write for the harp with confidence. Now, placing refers to groups of notes that we can place together as one set of notes. To understand this, we need to rewind real quick and take a look at the actual mechanics of playing a note on the harp. So in order to play one single note on the harp, we have four actions. Number one is place on the string. So we have to actually just sit on the string. Number two is press. So we need to have that contact and start to get that tension in the string. Number three, we play, and then to finish, number four, we have to actually close into the hand. So place, press, close, and then before we play another note, we have to then replace on the string. So place, press, play, close, replace. So there's a lot of steps that go into playing just one note which means that if we're going to be playing individual notes all over the harp, we have to allow time for all of those steps. We can't just play a big, really fast scale with one finger. That's probably the fastest that we could do. So then how do harpists play fast stuff like the Nutcracker? This is because we can combine all of these steps if we're placing multiple fingers on the harp. So if I were to place four fingers on the harp, I can combine the steps so I can place all of them, I can press all of them, and then I can play each one individually, and then close, replace all of them. So that allows playing notes that are far closer together than what we could do if we were having to place all of them individually. So that is really our key to writing music that's going to fit the hands and be idiomatic on the harp, is writing notes that can be grouped together. So there's a few things that we have to think about when writing these groups of notes. Number one, is only four notes at a time. So on the harp, we only use four fingers. We don't use our pinky finger. Now this is because the pinky finger is far too short to fit on the harp. If you see my hand, my fifth finger can't even reach the string. Now if I were to bring my fifth finger on the string, I have to completely contort my hand. You can see how my hand shape is completely tense and it doesn't look very comfortable. I also don't have any strength in these lower three fingers because there's so little finger independence between them. So in any situation where we need five notes, it's much easier to do a cross under rather than trying to play with the fifth finger. But if you're trying to group notes together, only four notes at a time. The second rule is keep those notes within an octave for the most part. Occasionally, yes, we can play groups that are larger than an octave. A harpist can generally reach a tenth on the harp, most harpists can, but it's a big stretch and it's not something that we want to do for a long period of time. So in general, keep your intervals within an octave. This is completely comfortable and I can play these groupings really fast because I can place all of them together. The third rule is keep the notes going in the same direction. So if I'm having to change directions, then I have to replace those notes and that adds a little bit of time. So if I'm playing notes in the same direction, in this case C, E, G, C, it's far faster to do it this way than if I'm playing, say, C, E, C, G. That's actually multiple groupings of notes. So we have our first group, then we have our second group. So I can't play that figure quite as fast as I could this. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have changes in direction happening, that's going to slow down your tempo a little bit. Now we do have some exceptions to this rule, and the main exception is the cross finger pattern. 
We can generally do this pretty quickly because it pairs stronger fingers together. What I mean by this is when we're doing a pattern that's alternating notes. We can generally do this pretty quickly. Now we can also do a descending, but it's not going to be quite as fast as ascending. It's just a little bit easier on the harp to do ascending patterns rather than descending, especially when we have cross fingering. So you might be wondering, do I actually need to write groupings into the music? No, you don't. Um, a harpist may mark some of them that aren't intuitive, but for the most part, we just see the notes and we figure out the fingering based on that. But if you're thinking through groups and focusing primarily on directional material, the odds are high that you'll avoid really awkward jumps within patterns. So there it is, my number one tip for writing idiomatically for the harp. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but I have a lot more videos coming for you. I try to upload something for you monthly, um, if not more often. So be sure to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.